I have talked about i3 window manager on my channel a lot over the last year or so. Ever since I switched away from DWM, I found myself liking i3 more and more. In fact, I would go so far as to say that I would have a hard time using another window manager, and I've proven that to be true because I've tried several times to use other window managers just to kind of switch things up, and I almost always come back to i3, usually after just a couple hours, because there's just so much good that is in i3, and I always just come back to it. One of the things that I've never really cared about on i3, however, is that it's a manual tiling window manager. And while it's not that big of a deal, because usually the most windows I'll ever have on a screen is two, when I do have two or more, I really don't care all that much for how i3 handles windows. Now, you probably are thinking, well, then why would you use a manual tiler if you don't like a manual tiling window manager? Well, I like all the other things about i3, and like I said, I don't often have to deal with the manual tiling aspect of i3 anyway, so it's never really been that big of a deal. However, one of the things I have said over the last few months is that if I could combine DWM and i3 and take all the great features of i3 along with the few features that I miss from DWM and put them all into one window manager, I think it would be absolutely perfect. Now, for the most part, that's pretty much impossible. But there is one aspect of DWM that I can bring into i3, and that is transitioning i3 away from being a, a manual tiler into a dynamic tiling window manager. And you do that with a little script called auto tiling. Now, auto tiling is a way to kind of hack i3 into being a dynamic tiling window manager. And let me show you what it does. First, actually, before we do that, let me go ahead and show you how i3 normally acts. So when you open up Windows, if you don't have auto tiling enabled, this is what you get. And then you have to do something like this, like a key binding, in order to get it to go the other direction. Okay, and then you would be able to do something like that. I mean, you can't really see that now because it's behind my head. But if I go over here, you can see if I do another key binding, we could do this. And that's the way a manual tiler works. You are always in charge of where the next window spawns, and you can control that by a key binding. And that's okay. I like that kind of control if I were to always need it. But I'm a lazy guy, so I really don't want to have to have that control when I don't need it. So... Auto tiling enables me to kind of get rid of this mess. Let me close these windows real fast. So when you have auto tiling enabled, it looks like this. So let me actually get rid of my face here so that you can see this full screen. So what it basically, this is what it does. And I'm not pressing any key binding other than to open up the window. And as you can see, it basically creates what is known as a spiral layout for a tiling window manager. And really what it's doing is that every time you open up a new client, which is what this is called, is it's a window. Every time you open up a new application, it automatically sends a signal to i3 to switch to the opposite layout. So let's just say I have this window here highlighted. I'd actually start going like this. And really what it does is it switches between vertical and horizontal tiling every other time you open up a window. So it goes vertical, then horizontal, then vertical, then horizontal, and so on and so forth. And that's what it does. It turns it into a dynamic tiler. Now, it's not as great, in my opinion, as like the master stack layout. You can finagle a master stack layout out of i3 with a certain script, but in my experience, it's always been kind of hit or miss. The auto tiling script has been rock solid, and I've experienced no problems with it whatsoever. And it is easy to install. So if you are on Arch Linux, it is in the AUR. If you are on Fedora, you will have to make it yourself. And there are instructions on how to do so on the GitHub page. Basically, what you're going to do is download the GitHub repo, rename the script that is in the Git repo, and then move it into your path. That's basically all there is to it. So you can run this on pretty much any distro you have, even if it's not in your repositories. And that's cool because one of the things I thought I was going to miss when I switched to Fedora is this script, but it turns out it was really easy to install. This is all auto tiling actually does. It turns i3 into somewhat of a dynamic tiler. And 
I find that almost indispensable. Now, I, I never have this many windows open, first of all. So honestly, anything over three or four, I'm never going to really notice. But I do sometimes have four terminals open up on the same screen. And it's nice to not have to control where those windows are going to pop up next. So while I'm here, let me actually show you how you would do this. So once you've installed auto tiling, whether you've done this from the AUR or you've built it yourself, getting it to run is actually really easy. So if I cd into my, where my i3 configuration file is, which is in my repository, and then I vim into my auto start file, you might have auto start in your i3 config itself, or you might have a separate i3 auto start file. It doesn't really matter. All you need to do in order to get this running is add auto tiling to your either your i3 configuration file or your auto start file. And it's just like this, and then it's done. You know, restart i3 and it will start doing auto tiling. So that's really all you'll need to do in order to get this up and running. And like I said, it's very easy to install. So pretty much anybody should be able to do it. So that is auto tiling on i3. I adore it. I think it's one of the things that really kind of adds some extra feature to i3 that you really won't be able to get otherwise and i'm always looking out for things like that and it really does kind of make me miss things like dwm less because one of the things that i missed about dwm was the dynamic aspect of it and now that i have that on i3 i don't have to miss it at all so while it's not quite as good as master stack it's still good enough so so that is it for this video if you have comments on auto tiling or you have any other cool i3 tools that you think i should check out leave those in the comment section below just remember don't give me any links because youtube will delete them you can follow me on twitter at the linuxcast you can follow me on mastodon or odyssey those links will be in the video description right below the like button if you could hit the like button it'd really help me out I'd appreciate it so very much. If you haven't subscribed yet, you should go ahead and do so because I have a lot of very cool Linux content that comes out pretty much every day of the week, so you don't want to miss that. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Linuxcast, just like all of these fine people. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. I truly do appreciate it. I can honestly say that I need to give you guys one huge thank you because without you, this channel probably wouldn't exist. Thanks for your support. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.